Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. This week, we're gonna be looking at the science investigating spot reduction, also known as targeted fat loss. Um, so basically, the idea that you can selectively lose body fat from specific areas or body parts. Now, it's common to see trainers argue that if you do certain ab exercises, your body will pull more fat from that ab area. Or if say, you store more fat on the back of your arms, doing high rep tricep extensions will burn that fat specifically. And I think it makes intuitive sense that your body would use fat stored closest to the active muscle to provide the energy needed for that exercise. I mean, if you're doing a set of crunches, why would your body pull fat from say your face or your legs when it could easily just grab fat directly above the exercising muscle? Well, I think to answer this question, we need to first look at how fat is burned in the first place. Uh, so the fat actually inside of our fat cells is in a form called triglyceride, but muscle can't use triglycerides directly as a fuel source. So first the fat must be broken down into glycerol and free fatty acids. These then enter the bloodstream, meaning that any fat being used to fuel exercise is going to pull from the bloodstream in general, which of course circulates throughout the entire body. So this seems to imply that fat can come from anywhere, not just the area being exercised currently. Uh, but I think before we can call this myth busted just yet, we need to look into the peer-reviewed scientific literature. So there are four studies I'd like to look at. The first was published back in 1971, and this was the first study to actually put the spot reduction hypothesis to the test. Basically, the researchers wanted to find out if there were body fat differences between the active swinging arm and non-active non-swinging arm in tennis players. So they measured the thick thickness of subcutaneous fat on both arms of tennis players, thinking that if spot reduction were true, then the active arm should have less fat on it. But that wasn't the case. Even though the active arm was more hypertrophied, so it had more muscle, there was no difference in the thickness of subcutaneous fat over the muscles of the arm receiving more exercise. Um, so this is strike one against the spot reduction theory. But keep in mind that this isn't an actual interventional study. It is simply observational. Uh, so we shouldn't draw strong conclusions on its basis alone. So up next is an actual interventional study published in 2007, which took 104 subjects, so 45 men and 59 women, and ran them through a 12-week training progressive program with their non-dominant arm only. So they did preacher curls, tricep extensions, concentration curls, etc., but only on one arm. At the end of the 12 weeks, they measured arm fat volume using MRI and found that subcutaneous fat volume changes were not different between the trained and untrained arms in men and women. Uh, so this is strike number two for spot reduction, uh, but this study also isn't the best because when you look at the actual data, you'll see that not much fat was lost in these 12 weeks period. Uh, so it isn't surprising that you wouldn't see spot reduction since there wasn't that much fat lost overall to begin with. Uh, so the next study we need to look at was published in 2013 and unlike the last study, actually saw a significant amount of total body fat lost, meaning this study will be better at detecting true spot reduction if it exists. Uh, but as it turns out, these researchers didn't find it either. After putting subjects through a high volume, 12-week lower body program using only one leg, there was no difference in fat mass changes between the trained and untrained legs. So up to this point, it's really looking like three strikes, you're out for the spot reduction theory. And this was the general scientific consensus for a long time. This was until a brand new study published just last year out of the University of Rome in Italy found the exact opposite result. This study also used a 12-week training program except unlike the others, which used only one limb, they split subjects into an upper body only and a lower body only group. Another important detail is that after the training sessions, all of the subjects performed 30 minutes of light cycling. And as you can see here in the graph, the results were really impressive. Let's just look here at the arms and the legs. The red bars represent the subjects who trained upper body only, and the green bars represent the subjects who trained lower body only. And I think clearly spot reduction is at play here. The group who hit upper body body only lost way more fat in their arms, but way less fat in their lower body and vice versa. The lower body group lost way less arm fat, but way more leg fat. And this is despite the fact that both groups lost the same amount of whole body fat overall. Uh, so this was really interesting to say the least, and it was covered in a recent issue of the Mass Research Review, where Dr. Eric Helms highlights the possibility that local muscular work increases blood flow to that nearby fat tissue, increasing mobilization of those stores. Now, under normal circumstances, after entering the bloodstream, if that fat isn't immediately burned off, there's nothing to prevent it from being stored again. However, if one was to perform low-intensity aerobic exercise, which predominantly uses fat for fuel, the now free fatty 
acids would likely be used to fuel this activity. Uh, but Helms also advises us to be very cautious with these findings, since it is just one study after all, and it had a small sample size, meaning the results could be a fluke. Uh, so all in all, we have at least three pretty solid strikes against spot reduction, uh, but one new and very interesting study found a specific application for this once debunked idea. Um, so all in all, I would say the idea that targeted fat loss or spot reduction is real is not busted. I think that based on the current state of the scientific literature, uh, we just can't say for sure whether or not targeting fat loss on specific body parts is possible or not. I personally remain highly skeptical given the equivocal nature of the data. Um, and I think that if it is possible, uh, it seems to only be possible if you do low intensity cardio right after hitting the body part that you're trying to target. Um, so doing crunches on their own probably won't help you selectively target ab fat. Uh, but if you were to do some cardio right after doing crunches, um, it just might work since the cardio might help burn off those free fatty acids that were liberated from the fat covering the abs, um, just from the increased blood flow to that area. Uh, so all in all, I'm not confident actually making this recommendation. I think that a sustained caloric deficit uh, progressive resistance exercise and sufficient protein intake are the three pillars of quality fat loss. And in my coaching experience, I've always found every time that stubborn fat areas are just simply the last areas to lean out. Um, so I think the most practical recommendation from my perspective is to just keep dieting, uh, continue to get leaner, and eventually that stubborn area will lean out as well.